All right. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, so this is going to be a VOG review of Pan Fried Soul up against Rossbrack's Chip from a couple weeks back. Uh, I'm going to start this one off with a basic overview of Chip, though, because I think this is going to turn into mostly just talking about like how to interact with Chip in general. So, all right, Chip is basically the closest thing to a perfect character in Guilty Gear. You know, he's got tools for every situation. He's got the DP, he's got incredible movement. He's got a command grab. Uh, in this game, Alpha Blade just always crosses up unless it's like far enough in that it just triggers cross up protection. Uh, it's wild. Uh, but yeah, so he's got great tools for everything. However, you know, if he ever uses the wrong one, he just dies. So when fighting Chip, it is there's like two places that you can focus really hard. Uh, the first one, and honestly probably the easiest one, is you need to make sure that when you hit him, he just dies. Like, his health is super low, so normal combos do a lot of damage, but sometimes you like, you know, he's just got so many options. Sometimes you just have to gamble on mashing out in a certain spot. And you want to make sure that if you're taking that risk anyways, uh, you can like win the round off of it or pretty close. And against Chip, you know, you can do that. So, uh, A, you know, figure out damage. If you're having trouble with Chip, you will at least get more wins against him if he explodes every time he guesses wrong. <laughs> True of all characters, but you know, more relevant versus Chip. On the other hand, uh, there's always the harder and Chip-specific thing of just labbing against Chip's offense. He does have a bunch of uh, different tools, but there's like a reason for him to use each one. And you know, they each have some small downside, whether it's like, oh, this one's mashable, or it's minus, or if you commit really hard against Gamma Blade, you can punch it and get real life damage on him. But so we're just going to be trying to focus on a couple of those things, mostly like defense against Chip, as far as, you know, being on defense, uh, pushing the advantage state as far as possible on mostly in combos and like the setups afterwards, but also like a little bit in neutral and like pressure situations. And then the other thing I did want to highlight in here is in uh, like soft pressure situations, Ross Brett goes for DP quite a bit. So I just want to highlight where you can uh, take advantage of that. First things first, going kind of in the order we were introducing things in earlier, I'm going to be focusing on damage and like the decision making to get there. So, so far, you know, both players are just kind of playing neutral. And this is something you'll see pop up a couple times. Uh, pan fried really, you like to go for dash up throw. And like here, it doesn't work out because spacing, that's whatever. Um, this is good if you are specifically trying to call out block. If you're trying to punish the whiff move here, you almost always want to use uh, 5k or close slash or something like that. Just because, you know, if you're wrong, then either way, it's not going to be a great situation. If you're right, though, throw does a little bit of damage and then has like a decent setup. Uh, if you get like 5k 6s revolver, that's almost half of Chip's health. So just not being afraid to commit a little bit harder and generally go for the higher rewarding option against Chip is like you don't want to over over commit, but it can uh, be a big difference maker. And we'll talk about defense against Chip uh, in a bit. Okay, uh, real quick aside, um, against Chip and other characters with a DP, Fafnir like this is very risky because they have the ability to just see the Fafnir and respond with DP, like it's a reaction punish. So against Chip, Soul, Kai, um, depending on the input and how proficient the opponent is with it, people with meter, stuff like that, uh, Fafnir for Oki can be kinda rough. It can be better to just run up and block things or whatever. Uh, in, like, you know, do it once. See if they bite or if they do actually DP. Not a bad thing by any means. This 5k is really good. I don't know if this is like a nerves drop or what, but just always remember to buffer like a 6s or something behind the 5k. Because either it didn't work, and the 6s doesn't matter, or it did work, and you don't have to confirm it because the 6s just combos. Okay. So here's a good example, you know, you whiff the jump slash the wrong way, but come down, get the big close slash, solid chunk of Chip's life gone, unfortunate burst, but in a in this same situation here, um, I, I like that you did start adjusting and going for the close slash, because 
that much red life up here, as opposed to the amount from throw, is very different. And I believe you can uh, run up in like true meaty off of this setup too. Okay, so here's a good example. Um, right here, you whiff punish the 2s 2h or the far slash 2h, which a very good. That move is like surprisingly hard to whiff punish. Um, in this situation, though. Once again, 5k is like one frame slower than your throw, and you'd get 5k 6s uh, revolver at least, because yeah, you don't have meter, but you'd get that situation and get far more damage than this. To be fair though, throw does do a lot of damage on ship. So not the end of the world, but you know, it's like you can reduce the number of interactions you have to win by making sure you're picking the correct starters and stuff like that. And against ship, that is just so massively important because the number of neutral interactions that you can win against a character with that many tools is uh, going to be lower than normal. Okay, so here, another big counter hit, close slash, good stuff. Lots of damage. Uh, I don't know how, like, I don't know what the combo route is, but I am pretty confident that there is a way that you could kill chip off of this. Um, though, if you were trying to bait the burst, that's its own whole other thing. That's totally fine, then. Yeah, this is the, uh, the punishment for not killing Chip, though, is then you, uh, you have to fight him more. <laughs> Alright, let's talk defense against Chip here. So, if he does a move, like, uh, let's see. So, say this got blocked. He can do a couple things. He has pretty standard, uh, like, frame trap pressure. You know, he can just go into a normal, or he can not go into a normal. Is he going to or not changes what response you have to do. So you have to guess that. But that's, you know, pretty much every character. Um, what Chip has that makes him special is from this situation, he has Alpha Blade. See, yeah, you can see my mouse. So he has Alpha Blade, which goes this way and always crosses you up 100% of the time. Uh, there's like a couple exceptions where it doesn't, but you can just treat it like it always crosses up. Because if it doesn't, then it's triggering cross up protection. You can block it either way. He has K Alpha Blade, which goes up here in the air, which I won't be covering too much. Um, there's a lot of options off of it, and I'm not fully sure on all of them. Uh, I'll talk about it briefly, though. Uh, he has the Leaf Grab, which, as I'm sure we all know by now, is absurdly fast and incredibly difficult to punish. It's so hard. Uh, on top of that, you know, he has the Fast Advancing Low, which is part of his Rekka. He's got, you know, he could just like let it recover, dash up throw, because he's super fast. So he's got like a million options. And he also has the overhead from his Rekka. So, what is the level one defense against all of these? Um, it's pretty, you can take a decent number of actions that do not hit Chip. Like you do not win the interaction and get damage on him. However, you also are it's very safe for you, so you can just kind of reset to neutral. You know, it's still like a win, sort of, because you're getting out of a disadvantageous position. So what you can do is basically just fuzzy jump. Um, so if you down back, right, and he goes for the low, you'll block it. And you do like, sorry, specifically what you do is you watch for him to disappear and fuzzy jump. Because if he just does another normal, it's probably going to be a low. The one exception to that is the big flippy overhead kick that hits up here. Um, and you just kind of have to watch for that one. It is incredibly minus on block though. Like if he, if you block that, uh, counter hit close slash might not be your optimal starter. You might be able to get like counter hit 2H. So murder him if you block that for sure. Uh, however, okay, so if he does Alpha Blade, after he just disappears, right? You will jump out just before it hits you. If he does K Alpha Blade, um, it can catch your jump start if you jump at the wrong time, but it doesn't get him a whole lot out of it. Like, it puts him in a decent mix up situation because he's like falling on you with a button, but you know, you're not going to die for it. Uh, and it jumps out of the grab. All of those are very good. Again, they're not rewarding for you, you just escape the situation. But, you know, it's better than getting hit by any of them, right? 
Um, I think optimally you actually want to fuzzy jump and then start holding to the right so that you can block the cross-ups, but... Uh, okay, so... Here's that quick advancing low, by the way. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this as well. This move is slightly minus, I believe. I have been told that it's plus zero, but I think that that's this move, actually. Um, but yeah, so this move is slightly minus. He can just kind of like go back into pressure from it, because he can steal his turn back, so to speak. Like, he's minus, so if you both press a button here, then you will probably win. Chip has some really fast buttons at this range, though, to be fair. Um, and he can go for the big overhead flip kick thing if he thinks that you're going to, like, press a low, which generally, like, 2k or 2p or something is going to be your fastest button, and it'll just low crush it. So if you are going to press against this, A, you need to be pretty confident he's not just going to stuff your follow-up, um, but B, just remember that pressing a low is risky. As Soul, you can probably just, like, 5k or, uh, far slash or something. They're, like, slightly slow, but in a situation like that, the, like this, it's not the worst. Yeah, so just know to watch out for that. The other big special moves that he has are uh, Gamma Blade, the one where he like sends out the clone. That one, you can punch it, and it does deal health damage directly to Chip. Um, I believe it also knocks him out of whatever other move he's doing, uh, if he's managed to recover fully from Gamma. Uh, don't, I, I might be wrong on that, though. Uh, what that move does is, no matter what, it is always plus 5 if you block it. Um, plus 7, I guess, if you faultless it. But whatever range it's at, it doesn't change the frame data. So what he's doing is he's giving you a little gap or like risking a little bit by putting, you know, a hittable thing out in front of you as a way to reset pressure. You can sort of think of it as akin to Giovanna's Spiral Arrow or Kai's Flip Kick. You know, those specials that are like advancing, have a big gap, but are plus. He just has a risk in a different way where it's not a big gap. It just, he's putting his life out there while being chip. The nice thing about Alpha Blade Cross Up is even if it hits you, it's not the worst in the world because it does just like a little chunk of damage. Like this much, granted it's scaled a little bit, but you know, it's a chunk. And then he just gets to run up and do a, like he can't do high low true meaty here. He can only do strike or throw. That said, you know, sometimes he just does the thing into Alpha Blade and then you get Vortex. We'll see that later on, I'm sure. Okay, so here's another good example of a pressure string. So this is close slash far slash into this first hit of Rekka. From this, he can go into the overhead, which again, it crushes lows, it is an overhead, um, and it is massively unsafe on block. Uh, or the low. You can either do the low immediately if he thinks you're trying to, you know, stand block the overhead early. He can do the load a very slight delay, which will catch you trying to fuzzy jump out of this situation. Because this is another one where you can just try and leave rather than interact with it. Um, or he can do delayed low if, like here, he probably thought you were going to mash against the overhead. And yeah, it'll counter hit, which I think he can get some pretty solid damage off of it. So definitely watch out for that, but... Yeah, we saw the beginnings of a Vortex there. I think Rossbrack is figuring out that uh, you didn't really know how to defend against Alpha Blade here, and if you don't know how to defend against it, it is super rough. The other thing about Alpha Blade, it, you'll need to check this um, like off of different buttons when he cancels into it. Uh, there is some startup beforehand, so you can like press a button and hit him, and he'll stay in front of you, and you can get like a counter hit combo, I believe. Like, this would be a good example. Right here, if you committed to a fast button, which, again, sometimes... Like, it's not the safest idea. Sometimes against Chip, you can be like, whatever. If I hit him, I will deal 50 plus percent. If he hits me, I'll take, like, 30. So sometimes gambles like this can be fine. But if you had chosen to here, uh, you could definitely hit him front side. Because he doesn't crot... Or he's, like... He's still on the front side here. So you just close slash him or something. Okay, so the other thing about that Rekka low that's so good is, as I was talking about, fuzzy jumping out of his pressure is very strong. What this means, though, is that you, if you are fuzzy jumping out of it all the time, you are very susceptible to uh, 
specifically timed lows, or even strikes in general, because it'll hit jump start. But this move launches him forward uh, and hits low. So if you're like a little bit off on your fuzzy jump timing, or if it catches your jump, then it'll grab you. So this move is very important. Uh, definitely watch out for it, especially when he has meter, because then he can hit you with that RRC into like a real damage combo. But on its own, it's not the worst thing to get hit by. Yeah, there's that overhead. Again, very unsafe on block. Uh, you'll see chips use it a lot more when they have meter. So when chips have meter, expect them to go for that overhead more. Expect them to like be looking for that delayed low to catch jump, stuff like that. Because he can convert off of basically anything with it. Okay, and here's a very good example. Um, you actually recognize and you do fuzzy jump out. And this is super good. This is exactly what you want to be doing. Good to see that you like figured it out as the match went on. That can be very difficult. But yeah, looked like you had the right idea going there. And okay, so last thing. Um, we've talked about you know pushing damage advantage on chip and uh, like selecting your starters based off of that in situations where like the throw will work but you can get more damage off something else. We've talked about some basic anti-chip defense stuff. Uh, however, the other thing I wanted to talk about is pushing your advantage state against him. Okay, so things like safe jumps are very important for this, right? Uh, they keep your opponent kind of locked in place, and the other nice thing that they do is they let you see what your opponent likes to do. Uh, they can also convince them not to do things. You know, if they if they try and DP the safe jump, then, uh, hey, cool, you get to kill them. If they don't stop DPing the safe jump, then you get to kill them a lot. If they do, then, you know, they start respecting it and you can go for other stuff. Um, in this situation, like, in this match, you weren't getting safe jumps on chip. However, um, you still have, like, the Oki setups. And you are letting... So, like, chip has the ability to gamble on DP there. Uh, like, because, you know, it's just... Did you run up and do close slash versus did you run up and throw? So very strike throw character, especially um, off of his like revolver and stuff, which is the common knockdown. So in this set, Rossbrack goes for DP a lot. You actually catch on a couple times and start trying to bait it, but uh, I, if I remember right, when you do, you are at almost half screen still when you start to block. So he isn't like, you know, you're not in his face, so he's not encouraged to DP. To be fair, though, I think he actually still does. <laughs> we'll see if it comes up here in a second. But trying to keep in mind what options the chip player likes to use, like if you can find a habit, I guess is what I'm trying to say, then you can blow them up for it because you only need to be right like twice. So if you find a habit, just abuse it. The chip has a million options, but as long as you can find one, that is what counts. All right, let's recap this. So we've talked about so far, um, first thing first was just general anti-chip overview. Like what does he do? What is the decision-making process behind it? You know, like, is it, uh, how bad should you feel when you get hit by the man with 10 million options? Uh, not too bad, you know, he has 10 million options. Sometimes you'll just be wrong against that. Um, we've talked a lot about optimizing damage on hits, choosing the correct starter, especially uh, as a character like Sol, who has a button, like one of the few who has a button that is almost as fast as throw. You can more or less think of any time you get the throw with the little punish text, it could have probably been a 5k. Um, we've talked some about defense versus chip, and finally we talked about like, you know, situations to watch for habits and defaulting to keeping pressure over a real mix-up if you have the option. Sometimes, like some knockdowns, you just don't have the option. You have to give them the 50-50. But yeah, so hopefully this has helped. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, pan fried, or I guess, I don't know, if people decide to watch this and put it in the comments or something. Uh, I am also definitely not a soul or chip player, which is why I haven't talked too much about the neutral. I'm not I don't feel comfortable speaking about how these two tools interact in neutral because I just don't know the real threat ranges and stuff. 
Um, overall, though, I think that you were doing pretty well in neutral, to be honest, Panfried. It was just as soon as Chip got something started on you, you would crumble. Like, really, I think that this entire set just came down to uh, the defense more than anything else. Like, you can optimize damage, and that's good, but a lot of this was just, like, the vortex with Alpha Blade that you got put in a couple times. So I think that if you can just go into training mode and, you know, record Chip doing far slash Rekka 1, and then a different slot, far slash Alpha Blade, another slot, far slash Leaf Grab, and then another one like K-Alpha, then like, you know, you'll be in a much, much better spot and able to take on a lot more chips uh, in the tower or maybe Rossbrack if we end up fighting them again. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Hope this helped and we'll see you in a bit, I guess.